S parts. I've never done whole parts. Oh, they take little tiny pieces. There won't even be a scar. I think I found the problem. Oh, come on, you're the doctor. Everyone. Lights out. And quiet. I'm a Derek. And Derek's don't podcast. I'm, um... What do you think of that? Is that good? Is that <laughs> any of it? I was, ra- I was racking that's my brain. I was like, bro. are there good quotes and bad taste? <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not the that's a good, movie you watch good. for dialogue. I guess there's like, tomorrow we're podcasting you for lunch. Yeah. Or, uh, uh, what are you doing? Uh, who is doing on my podcast? I just remember lots of vomit and brain noises. Lots of vomit. So, uh, yeah, hard to oh my God, re- replicate yeah. that with, <laughs> um, with, yeah. my, with a quote. Uh, but I'm Colonel Sanders from Space. Um, and uh, and of, uh, of course we uh, we have our third man here uh, joining us virtually. Zach, I'm Zach. I'm <laughs> Zach. <laughs> That's it. That's all it is today. Uh, I am Lord Crom, but you can call me Danny. And this is a show called Medium Work, where movies come to be examined. Indeed. And sometimes they get you know revived or, yeah, or, or yeah, what's just, the word? Yeah. Uh, what did you do? Chopped and screwed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> chopped, chopped, screwed, and screwed. dissected. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes they stay buried. Uh, yeah. Today we're doing a special, if you will, on uh, first movies. Yeah. Uh, we're sort talking of a holdover actually from October, from the, sure. from the Halloween yeah, yeah, yeah. season. Yeah. With both of these. We're talking about the uh, Kiwi splatter fest that is bad taste. Mm-hmm. And then we're following it up with American movie, which is, in my opinion, maybe the greatest American indie of the 1990s. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's up there. Uh, so I, I want to open this up first. Where we're going to start with bad taste, a movie that means a lot to me, mm. just because when I was at the age where I saw this, I was kind of obsessed with watching filmmakers first movies. Yeah. What do they look like? I mean, what does Gus Van Sant's first movie look like? What does Sergio Leone's first movie look like? Is yeah. it crude? In this case, it's very crude. <laughs> and, we, you know, what makes a great first movie? You know, what are the great ones? Killer of Sheep, El Mariachi. Yeah. Killer of Sheep is a good one. Uh, um, what else? <laughs> Eraserhead, you know. Oh, uh, what did I just watch? Um, Love and Basketball. Yeah. By yeah. Gina, is that uh, a first movie? Yeah. Yeah. Gina yeah, shit. Blythewood, yeah. She has a weird filmography because then she just did The Woman King, which is like so far. From I, I heard that that was like people really liked that. Yeah, um, but these are very different even from those. I, I think yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Bad Taste is very singular. Um, it is. <laughs> I mean, if, f- first movies are special. You yeah. know, they have their own vibe and their own kind of arsenal of ambition. Yeah. What were this person's means, right? Yeah. Now, I- I- the folklore around bad taste is very interesting because, I mean, I- some stories conflict with each other. I mean, I know this is a movie shot now, maybe like 40 years ago, right? Yeah. But the story is that there was no film industry in New Zealand. Nothing going on. Peter Jackson grew up making little stop motion animations with his eight millimeter camera. Mm-hmm. So, you know, models and effects and stuff were all very deeply ingrained in his cinematic genealogy, mm-hmm. I guess. He goes on to be a very big effects guy, big models guy, miniatures and stuff. He loves all that stuff. So he decides, fuck it. I'm going to do it myself like the greats always do, yeah. <laughs> like like the great directors always say. And uh, <laughs> raises the money to make this movie over the course of his week, you know, work week, works an extra job on Saturdays to afford the film. And then on Sunday, him and his mates, him and, and his Kiwi guys, yeah. you know, they just hit the bricks and they start rolling. So this movie never had a script. Which I'm sure you could tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I, I, sure I you could tell. The, uh, I watched the video essay that you sent mm-hmm. me about it, and so um, that gave a little bit of context. And I read a little bit on Wikipedia in terms of the making of it. Um, but it, it was... I don't think I fully knew that it was a Peter Jackson movie until I started right. watching it. or that it was, Did I not I tell you? You might have. I think you mentioned it, but I, I just might have forgotten. I certainly didn't know it was his first movie. It's like whiplash when you see a Peter Jackson film. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's so weird. And this Especially movie, because I haven't seen anything except Lord of the Rings. I don't know if you have, Zach. I think we're probably in the same boat there. Did you guys like, ever see Heavenly name, Creatures? Name them. Name what did you say? No. I said name. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so Zach, he was a big you know. horror guy. He made the goriest movie of all time called Dead Alive. Here in North America, overseas, yes. it's called Brain Dead. Brain Dead. Um, Meet the Feebles, which is basically oh. the Muppets with Kraken and Massacres. Uh, <laughs> nice. And it's a musical, by the way. And then he, he starts <laughs> to put on his big boy pants, um, and he makes The Frighteners with... Um, Guy from Back to the Future is his name. Uh, <laughs> this is fuck. terrible. This is terrible. Uh, Michael J. <laughs> Michael J. Fox, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he- Heavenly Creatures, you know, and then he goes really big, really commercial. He becomes 
I think inarguably one of the most commercially viable filmmakers of the first quarter of this century, you mm-hmm. know, and, and his fundamental stepping stone is Bad Taste. This is where he gets his start. Yeah. A really, really crude movie and, and a movie that I appreciate a lot. I mean, even now I, I laugh watching this. I mean, I know it's really kind of wince inducing yeah. and stuff, lots of brains and, and carnage and shit, but it's also... It has this almost anarchist like love for filmmaking yeah. that's so deeply ingrained within it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I, I think what makes a great first movie special is that it's a statement of intent. Yeah. We had a movie come out this year called We're All Going to the World's Fair, and that yes. is unequivocally like a statement of intent. This is how I do it. You know, I mean, you watch the first like two minutes of Eraserhead and you're kind of like, OK, I get this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that this is like a bold. You're doing like a new thing, mm-hmm. I think. The, the first like shot of the evil dead right mm-hmm. uh, camera comes out of the swamp and is kind of careening past like cars in the lake and stuff and fog and, and yeah. going into the woods the pov of the demon and um y- you know y- you have to really announce yourself not right. that you can't have a successful career if your first movie is a flop right mm-hmm. stanley kubrick if his first movie's bad <laughs> do you know have you have you ever seen um fear and desire no i haven't seen that one. he famously like hated it so much that he tried to have like every copy of it destroyed oh okay. he, he was <laughs> it's nice. it's a very crude Don't movie he hasn't quite figured out blocking or uh, anything like that he the basic tools of filmmaking aren't really aren't there for him in his arsenal yet no but, <laughs> the, but this guy goes on to do 2001 yeah and the shining and stuff i mean it's 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 inspiring uh, yeah. but I mean, what well, are other examples? Wong Kar Wai's first movie is not really a Wong Kar Wai movie, mm, right? He yeah, doesn't yeah. really get there until uh, Days of Being Wild. Yeah. The first one is his Tears Go By, right? Yes. Yeah, it's different. It's okay. I mean, it, it feels a little melodramatic and stuff. A far cry from what's eventually going to be, you know, 2046 and, yeah. and Chunking Express and stuff. Uh, this movie is in an interesting space where it is a statement of intent, but it's also... N- it's hard to think of another filmmaker that attempted something like this on their first go. Right. When you're in film school, they tell you, write for your budget. I mean, you you see a lot of senior thesis films where it's two people on a rooftop and they're talking, and that's the whole thing because yeah. they wrote for their budget, which yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, but you 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 know, it's hard to stand out. I mean, I remember putting seven locations in my senior thesis film and it never got finished. It was just too much and shit fell apart. Mm-hmm. Here is a guy who's making a movie that you could feasibly understand a modern studio injecting a hundred million into it. Because here's the plot, right? All along the Kiwi coastline, as it were, <laughs> these New Zealanders are being uh, replaced by these brainless NPCs mm-hmm. who, who kind of wander around looking for more guys to turn into fast food. So, I, I mean, making that movie now, that's like going to be a movie with a budget. Yeah. But he, he, he says, fuck it, I'm making my movie with or without the money, and we get, you know, what bad taste, how it currently exists, mm-hmm. which is a movie that's very clunky and, and has a lot of, you know, but at the same time, it's a lot of fucking fun. Did you ever smile in the last, like, act when... Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, this, yeah, this can dovetail into, like, our initial impressions. Obviously, Zach and me, the first time seeing it, um, you know, I, I read a letterbox review that said something very interesting, which is that you can kind of see Peter Jackson learning how to make a movie yeah. as the film progresses, yeah. which I think is really apt. Um, Especially because at the very beginning, no budget. No. And, and, I mean, and, you know, they get there on the day and they're like, okay, what are we going to shoot today? Right. And then towards the end, uh, New Zealand Film Commission, mm-hmm. who he was lying to, which I love that story, he, he wasn't telling them he was making a splatter movie. Yeah. <laughs> they were brand new and they were like, okay, we'll give you a little bit of money and then that's how the finale <laughs> comes to be. And, and... I was wondering about that. What would the finale have been had he had he not hit up the New Zealand Film Commission? I have no... I, <laughs> it's like, hard to imagine. Yeah. I really think it's important also just for our audience to to keep in mind that this movie was was made over four years it yes. was like four yeah, years yeah. of weekends. shooting on weekends yeah, yeah. Oh! Night, Night of the Living Dead yeah. was very similar I mean they were shooting on weekends yeah yeah, yeah it was guys that were four running around years. four years yeah which is those guys look the same through the whole movie yeah <laughs> which which is kind of impressive in its own way yeah I, I think the, the story with the racer had lots of similarities between the two. That's, I guess, the one is more sophisticated than the other. But, you know, at one point, um, Jack, Jack Nance, who plays the main character, he walks through a doorway. And David Lynch said, the first shot where you see him in the hallway, open the door and walk through was shot in one year. The next shot, us seeing him come in to the door was shot five years later. Wow. 
That's when you don't have any money, you got to just stew <laughs> over it, you know, forever. <laughs> you just have to wait. Yeah, I, I crushing think, um, and inspiring. To that point, and I'm, I'm curious how you felt about it too, Zach. But when I, I think my appreciation and for the movie also increased with the runtime, right? Because by yeah. the, by the third act, where where it's just like. It's basically like Doom, and they're mm-hmm. running around like yeah, shooting yeah, yeah. like aliens. Um, I was like, okay, this is fun. But getting to that point, it was it was testing me a bit. Yeah, <laughs> Zach, 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 what did you think? Yeah, I definitely, I feel the same way. I think like by the end, like when they're like all those like shootout scenes, I thought were actually really fun. Um, yeah, like you know like, how he did the the muzzle flares. No, I don't know. He uh he was taking the actual negative and so he he had made the his own guns and props and stuff of pipes and things like that and he had been taking a pencil and poking holes in the negative so that when it ran through the projector the light shining through made it look like oh. there were muzzle flares on the gun. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, very very cool. Do it yourself, make your own damn movie. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought the ending like the the shootout scenes were a lot of fun, but I also like appreciated um Derek's whole like sequence like mm-hmm. when he like <laughs> before he like takes that that Peter Jackson uh like tumble off that cliff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just thought that scene was like a lot of fun and <laughs> He's I just fantastic. wasn't expecting to be yeah, I just wasn't expecting to be that engaged in that. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, what yeah. the fuck it, is and, this? And it's it's <laughs> also, it's like, that feels so improvisational. I mean, all the little, the hammers hitting each other and the guys getting knocked back and yeah. stuff. Like, it, it's Good weird detail. to think of it as Peter Jackson ever being this improvisational guy, right? Uh, yeah. Lord of the Rings right. is so... <laughs> choreographed. Choreographed, prim right. and proper. I mean, he, he, by that point, he's kind of a well-oiled machine. You know, that's how they work with actors. They're not his buddies anymore. Right. Here's your mark. Right. You're going to enter from here. These are your ones, et cetera, et cetera. And bad taste comparatively, it's it's anarchy. It's, yeah. it's, it's total... <laughs> mm-hmm. It's an anarchist film. I, uh... I actually, I don't know if I'm like the the donkey of the day for this. I did not realize that um, Peter Jackson was playing the first guy. Was Derek? He was. He's also playing the I alien. Knew he, I knew he was the alien the, yeah. because I'm I'm used to him with the beard. Yeah. When he didn't have the beard, I didn't know who that man was. <laughs> Wait, he was who? He was the guy with the Gryffindor scarf. He was uh, uh, Derek. Is that his name? Derek. Yeah. The guy who who. No, I knew he was okay. He's also actually, the alien. Let me, let me... Zach, that's hanging off of the side of the cliff that he's interrogating oh, that, with the sword and the shoe. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's okay. So here's my thing. The whole time, I never really, honestly knew what Peter Jackson looked like. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, when, yeah. Uh, when, 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 what was his name? Barry. Is that one of the characters? Maybe Probably. the the Barry, the one that like he he's like walking around. He has the revolver. He shoots the dude's head off. Sure, sure. Right, that guy. So when he walked on, I was like, there's Peter Jackson. So the whole yeah, movie, yeah. I was like, this is Peter Jackson. And I was like, let me actually just... And so like, oh, I, it showed... P- Peter Hearn. Yeah, yeah Peter Hearn. Uh, he died Peter of Hearn. Uh, cancer, I believe. Oh. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he oh. played Barry. That guy. Yeah, so yeah. so when they showed his face with the name Peter O'Hearn under it, I was like... <laughs> and so then it came back to like Derek, and I was like, <gasps> like, because I, I had a love hate relationship with Derek. Like, when he was oh, revived, I, I was so like, what the fucking fuck? funny, man. He, he's, he is, he's, no, he is, but sometimes I wanted him dead. Sure, sure. And you, you kind of get your wish, and then you see him stumble back out of the out of the grave like a phoenix from the ashes. I want to know. Jamming brains into his own <laughs> skull. That was really. Was he turned into an alien? Is that what happened? No, him? I don't think so. Well, he he jumped. He just literally into... survived. He, oh man, that's what I should have said at the beginning. I, I'm born again. <laughs> Any chance I was the fucking? How can I plug podcasts into that? Uh, I'm podcast again. Yeah, that wouldn't have worked. No. Whatever. No, you're but good. but that that fucking final <laughs> shot is so funny. It, him inside of the Lord Crom and. Having the Horrifying. chainsaw as he takes off into space. I mean, what a way to announce yourself as a filmmaker. <laughs> yeah, I um, <laughs> it also it this movie really I think tested the limits of like my gross out um, sure sure uh, capability. The vomit is rough. The fucking man. the green fucking yeah, vomit. It's rough. <laughs> it's so rough. <laughs> the I just how every rough other it's like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and like people are just sucking on it. I'm like, fuck yeah. it. It's yeah. like steaming. Because the thing tomorrow is, tomorrow we're I, getting off this shitty planet. I, I just watched Evil Dead too, right? Sure. And that has a lot of like gross stuff, but it all felt like it was tied into I the think story. This is an ass to win. Oh, it I is. Mean, it than is. Any Evil Dead. It, it certainly is because uh, I guess because of how like. I don't know, intimate it all feels sure. like, 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 you so know, gross. the brain, yeah. through someone else's brain to <laughs> he's put putting someone own. else's brain into your head, fucking head. And yeah. Then, yeah. The sound, like the sound design 
is really unsettling. Be, the sound designer should be in jail. <laughs> yeah. The fact that he upchucks and it's sure. steaming. It's I've and never, there's, there's steam coming off of it. You yeah. can't like obviously I film does not capture the sense of smell, but I really felt like it was sure. getting close with this one. Yeah, I know it smells crazy in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think this uh, also made me think, and we can talk more about this um, when we get into American movie later. But like, <laughs> it made me think about. What I would do, what I'd be willing to do as an actor for my friend trying to make a movie, sure, you know, and sure. how long I'd be willing to yeah. hold out. I don't know what that vomit was made out of. You know what I mean? It, would you have been able to spend nine hours in one of those uh, crumb uh, uh, costumes, I, the, the aliens with the bulbous heads and stuff? I, don't think so. I had a funny thought earlier. I, I I thought like, what if like medium work um, became as big of an, an enterprise to where like we were creating thumbnails like for each of the episodes so yeah. for bad taste? It would have been you know. Lord Crumb flipping off the camera, and instead of the AK, it's like a podcast mic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, uh, four of them, and just great yeah, yeah. poster. It is fucking a great poster. so. Good. I would have loved to have that on my wall as a it kid. It kind of threw me because I expected the movie to be like, I guess more of like a you know Martian men walking around sure, sure, the world yeah. and like taking over. I didn't yeah. know that. I think it was if you had the be money this. from the get go, they would have had the costumes the whole time. Yeah. Instead of just the last twenty yeah. minutes, they yeah. all looked like that. Like I didn't know. I didn't expect um, it to be this sort of. Uh, almost like espionage sort of situation. Sure. Right. Uh, uh, invading the uh, crumb base, as it were. Yeah. Which is, fu- which is funny. I wonder if, if he ever were to do a sequel to this, if that would have been, if the lore would have been like, their ships can take the form of like, any housing construct from any planet, like including like strange, like Victorian countryside looking. I mean, how do you even describe that house? Right. Seeing that thing take off and go into spaces, yeah, it's very cool. I, I was, was really looking cool. at that, and I, and I, I, by this point, I just watching the movie, I didn't realize that um, his budget increased over the course of making the film. Yeah. So I was like, "How is right. he doing this?" <laughs> right, I was like, "Where was that? Where's that money? Where was that money in the beginning of the movie?" Like, I didn't expect it. When it all of a sudden lifted off, I was like, "I was so certain it was just going to be reaction shot, like looking up." Yeah, looking yeah, up, looking yeah. Up. But all of a sudden, it fucking took off. It's a very like, convincing miniature. It is. The miniature looks it's great. It's really good. And I think what it's sells really it is, well, obviously part of what sells it is that you don't ever really see the actors in frame with it, of sure, course. Otherwise, sure. the illusion would be broken. But um, there's a lot of ways that it gets super close to it. Yeah. Like when you see them being, the one guy being dragged underneath. I, that is so backyard yes. movie. Yeah. <laughs> like him crawling on the uh, on the grass patch trying to get off. Yeah. yeah. You can just the, see uh, them like laughing behind the camera. Apparently, the the last moment there with the uh, the sheep that gets obliterated by the Fucking bazooka love that, by the way. was was unfortunate. Was the last vestige of of a, a joke that he had cut out of the film. So he wanted there to be this running gag where there was a sheep like chasing uh, the, the boys throughout the movie, and then he realized that uh-huh. number one, I have no money. Number two, animals are impossible to work with yeah. <laughs> on our yeah. movies, yeah. and they derail productions all the time. Yeah, so I'll just um, I'll just, I'll just blow kill it up. this thing. Yeah, yeah. Fuck blow it. it up. And also the the rocket, amazing shot, reverse shot where. I love I love the sight gag where where Derek kind of chainsaws his own silhouette and then steps through it. Yeah, looks mm. really cool. But then when he's about to take on Lord Crumb and I think it's Barry who shoots the rocket. Through. Yes, <laughs> and the rocket passes through and then we see reverse shot goes out the other side. The rocket is on like a fish line. Yeah, <laughs> and I think there's like a sparkler uh. taped to the back <laughs> to make it nice. look like there's it's like you know shooting through the air. Yeah, really fucking cool. You know, low budget cheats. I love that shit. Yeah. Love that. Um, yeah. Do you do you think this is the type of movie uh, that would be remade? I don't know, because think about it. I think Peter Jackson would be like the sole owner of the rights to it, right? It would be remade with kids. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sure, like, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a Jumanji to, to his son or something. He he would have to yeah. like lease the rights to some studio, and, and I don't know why he he would want to do that. But he, but if if it were to be remade. I don't know. It would probably be injected with a lot more money, and that would eliminate a lot of the uh, charm of bad taste. The I charm, think. yeah. Probably. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, actually, now that we're talking about it, what his most recent film was. He's been doing a lot of documentaries. He did that Beatles thing that came out this year. Oh, the, oh the, I didn't see what's that, that called? Was that called the Get Back? Or am I confused? Uh, well, I'm was it a series? I don't know. I think it was like a really long oh, documentary. Talk, yeah, the Beatles Get Back, the yeah, rooftop yeah. concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Oh, okay. He had been remastering all that footage, and he said that he's going to re-release all of his his naughty movies, he calls them, uh, and scan them all in 4K, he, uh, including Dead Alive, uh, Bad Taste, Meet the Feebles, mm. and I think he's including Heavenly Creatures in that. In that. Um, 
Well, yeah, you know, it's so interesting because I it, it's Peter Jackson before today is a director who I'd always put more thematically in line with like Steven Spielberg. Sure. He seems like the, the type of guy, that, guy. Yeah, yeah. that you get when you need an event film because mm. and that yes. and, and so it's like he's done, you know, Tintin. Tin. He did the last thing he did was Mortal Engines. He's been sure. doing those Hobbit movies, oh, District yeah. 9, King Kong. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like obviously he's he's done all that. I saw a comment on a on I think on the Royal Ocean film sure. video, which is like I'd love to see Peter Jackson come back to his yes. roots in this, yes, and 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 make another horror movie, um, or or yeah. whether it's a horror or just a splatter, you know, comedy or mm-hmm. whatever it is. Um, and it's like, yeah, what would that look like now? He's got, yeah. I mean, he's got all the pull in the world. I I I, th- I think about it a lot. I mean, so many of my favorite filmmakers start as these like scrappy little little indie guys who who love their their blood and the hammy performances from yeah. their friends and stuff, and it's so charming to watch. I mean, I think if he were to come back to this now, he probably wouldn't be able to help putting an A-lister in it and then kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. su- sucking out the fun. Ma- maybe he gets Pratt. why it's a, a success. Chris Pratt. <laughs> sure, sure. M- maybe he gets why people like it and he would just try and go back and, and do a scrappy thing with his friends again. I mean, who knows? I mean, he could finance this now on his own and, and shoot it in like a month, you know? Yeah. I don't I, I don't imagine that he's a director who really has to suffer a lot of um, pressure from like studio sure, execs who sure. are telling him to I think it. he's made his money. He, he has a yeah. Best Director Oscar. Uh, yeah. Lord of the Rings, I mean, cumulatively, including like The Hobbit or whatever, <laughs> yeah, billions and billions and billions. Never has to work. You know? Yeah. yeah. He doesn't have to worry about anything f- for the rest of his life, which which maybe makes him the great like folk hero of like the indie splatter movie. I mean, I mean, Sam Raimi is really, really up there, but Peter Jackson starts as this guy who has nothing, is making this movie while he's living with his mom. Yeah. He's baking the uh, masks and stuff, like, in her oven yeah. and, like, breaking her oven and stuff. And, <laughs> and then he, he now, I mean, I'm sure has real estate all over the world and is is so respected and stuff. He, he is it probably more of a household name than Raimi is, right? Oh, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And, 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 Speaking of the mask, just real quick about that. You, if this movie hadn't been made this way at that time, and they like somehow it got made today, I, I can't imagine that they would have come up with a design as creative. As I, lo- I what love Peter the way Jackson they look. Develops. Yeah, so good. It would have been CG from Army. Obviously. I love that their ass cheeks are <laughs> <That's> <laughs> bulging out of their fucking pants. <laughs> And the shoulder pads and yeah. stuff, it's great. <laughs> I was, and that they're all like hunched and they just look fucked. They look like an alien race that's been eating fast food. Yeah. Yeah. They look like yeah. chicken nuggets. It's like really, really chicken good. Chicken nuggets. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is more effective to me than uh, I, I remember in middle school they made us watch Super Size Me. Sure, uh, sure. This is a hundred times more effective oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. than yeah. that than that documentary was. I watched that documentary and went to McDonald's later that day. Oh, <laughs> but Well, this, you learned nothing, Justin. I did <laughs> I didn't care, but this made me think, you know. Maybe. That's what's kind of nasty. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I, I like what's going on thematically. I'm not even sure if it was his intent or not. I mean, it, he's he's so, you know, tunnel visioned on just trying to get the thing made. But thematically, there's, there's kind of interesting stuff. I mean, we're, you know, a world full of people who love easy consumption, fast food. We love that shit. And... We are the ones who end up getting consumed. You know, we're the we're the malnourished cattle. Right. You're looking at the Texas Chainsaw. I uh, no, Wikipedia because I wanted page. to see when the first one came out. Seventy four. Okay, yeah. yeah. So this this is way after that. Yeah. Similar. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, right? I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's you know. Shout out to uh, my favorite Toby moment uh, is when. Uh, yeah. No, shout out my favorite moment is when uh, Barry, Peter O'Hearn, uh, is like gearing up to stab that one alien mm-hmm. with a pitchfork in the shed. <laughs> and he like yeah, lunges yeah, he out, stuck, yeah. but he gets stuck. <laughs> the green door just closes and he's like, God damn it. <laughs> Yeah. I, I uh, speaking of gags, movie. a gag I fucking love in this movie, and it used to kill me when I was a kid, and I watched it again, and and it killed me again. I mean, it's Peter Jackson is playing one of the aliens, and the bigger alien, the guy in the cook uniform, who the first time we see him, it's it's a callback to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, because he opens the door and oh, he's in the yeah. cookout yes. with the meat hammer, and he and meat hammers. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that guy? Oh, I guess he's good. like a health inspector Just or whatever, some dude. Yeah. yeah um, so that guy is is doing the famous, you know, we're going to kill you thing with yeah. the finger on the throat. And then Peter Jackson, oh. the alien, is trying to mimic him. And so he's doing the we're going to kill you. But then he actually slices his throat. Slices his throat. <laughs> it's the funniest <laughs> fucking thing ever. I, I don't know why it's so funny, but it's it's funnier than shit I've seen in like any movie in the last 10 years. I don't so know. Good. It really made me laugh. 
Yeah, it's uh, I, I I looked at this and I also felt um, there was a lot of probable influence on like Men in Black. Maybe, in terms yeah. of like the mm. it was a cult the, hit the silliness of aliens like yeah. they're not really a threat they're a nuisance you know mm-hmm. yeah. uh, it's kind of oh yeah the sense that i got and like yeah. yeah the sound design also on the aliens like just the sounds they fucking make like, <laughs> yeah. but they're Did human like know? men in black does that a lot yeah. yeah do you guys know what the sitcom is is it the brady bunch where the, the last shot is like it's their house and all the kids are like in their rooms and they go Good night, so and so. Oh yes, yes, yes. And the lights turn Good off. Good night, Jojo. Is that Brady yeah. Bunch. Yeah, yeah. I liked how, I, how the I aliens were doing that. Uh, oh yeah, they, they were, were talking so about funny. A little sitcom called yeah. back. That was great. They were. That was um, great. Yeah, this. Um, I mean, you know, like I said, I think by the end of it, first of all, I was so like just thrown by the whole thing. Sure. But I was genuinely in the watching of it. I was enjoying it by the yeah. end. Um, uh, although yeah. there was definitely a point, like <laughs> when uh, when Derek falls down with the chainsaw onto <laughs> Lord Crumb. Yeah. I was like, is this oh done God. yet? Like he keeps like <laughs> that going. went on for forever. I'm like, born is again. It, is it over <laughs> yet? Uh, uh, maybe that's like he wrote that part for himself because he just couldn't imagine getting one of his friends to do that. Yeah. Completely right. head to toe and gore. Yeah. And caro yeah. syrup or whatever it was that they were using. Yeah. Has Sam Raimi ever inserted himself into one of his films like that? Uh, he's the he's the knight at the end of Evil Dead Two who goes, "Hail he who has come from the skies to deliver us from the terrors oh, okay. of the deadites," and they all go, "Hail, hail!" Yeah, but he's never been. Um, like, he's in a bunch of Coen Brothers movies. He ah. he cameos in a bunch of Coen's movies. He's in uh, Miller's Crossing and Bruce Campbell's in Fargo and. Uh, you know, because they were all roommates and stuff. So. Right, right. Um, That's fun. But yeah, I mean, I would have loved to see Peter Jackson try and try and. He's funny. I mean, I don't know. I, I know he's not like an actor, actor, but I would have loved to see him in more goofy stuff. He's he's a silly motherfucker. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, when you, you went for it. Yeah, you only you know, have uh, two Kiwi directors to really compare. Uh, sure. Him and Taika Waititi, yeah, yeah. Who, who have reached yeah. you know worldwide acclaim. And and what's funny is so much stuff gets shot in New Zealand. They're really yeah. tax friendly. Bad Taste being the first movie to ever be shot or funded in New Zealand. Yeah. And Historically they, significant, whether you like it or not. Not. And it's. Uh, not only the taxes, which I didn't even know about, but I imagine just the the locale is beautiful, beautiful yeah. looking place. Oh, when when Derek is hanging yeah. off of that cliff, I mean, even you know the, the cut on Tubi is really bad. I have to, the Tubi cut is like really hazy. Mm. Um, but when he's hazy, what the fuck? When he when he's hanging <laughs> off of that cliff and the camera kind of goes over and you see yeah. like the the coast, yeah. you know, it's it's like it's a gorgeous shot. Yeah, yeah. And it's like this is just mm-hmm. where he was living. Like, <laughs> he he's living in the most great. beautiful fucking place ever. Yeah. Where no one had shot a movie. Like what the fuck? Yeah. He really did open uh the doorway to that and yeah. then got to I saw this other letter uh letterbox oh. review that was like, um I love the idea that there was a the the Tolkien estate had to watch this movie yeah, yeah, deciding yeah. whether or not yeah, yeah. to uh, to let him direct uh, the Lord of the Rings just a hundred year old men shifting watching the vomits yeah, in their tweed suits. <laughs> when did J R R Tolkien pass? Do we know? Was it was it even? I mean, was it last? Probably, maybe the seventies, right? Seventy three. Seventy three. There you go. So I I wonder. <laughs> I also wonder what he would have even thought about, you know, the adaption of Lord of the Rings. I mean, because because Peter Jackson, for as crude as his work was, I mean, they obviously made the right choice. Those movies are perfect. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah. They, they they really yeah. get every detail of the books, and they're all like four hours. But yeah. it's because he's <laughs> devoted to that material. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's interesting also because that. I've seen those those movies. I I only saw like the first Hobbit movie. Uh, it's same. I didn't watch yeah, the, the follow ups. But, follow-ups. but I, 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 I grew up watching you know the original Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but not the director's cut. The point just being that like Return of the King used to make me just cry. It's for, crazy like, an hour good. Straight. And and but and even though I'm I'm not like a super Lord of the Rings fan. Sure. Um, I still definitely do respect those movies. I, and it's, it's still like yeah. Look at all this shit. Yeah. Look at all of these sets. Look at all of these miniatures and models and like all these costumes and stuff and you know. The the, music, the, the, the early age the of that yeah. CG is like crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, it does. It has great fucking performances. I mean, all around from everybody. He he really hit the ball out of the fucking park. Yeah, yeah. Which makes I think bad taste essential viewing. You, you, you got to see where a guy like that starts and and where his head's mm-hmm. at when he's at the age that we are. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had um a film professor named Greg Takedis. And he taught me a course called Aesthetics of Directing, and, and he was incredible. 
And th- thinking about this, I mean, it, 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 you know, it gets me tearing up and stuff. But he said one time, he was like, I don't care if the only camera you've ever held is on your iPhone. If you have a brain in your head, you'll figure out how to do it. If you have a heart in your chest, you will do it. Make your own damn movie. It was right after we had watched uh, Tangerine, which which is a micro budget thing that Sean Baker, you know, filmed with an iPhone. Mm. Um, and that always stuck with me. It's it's like th- these guys who just go out and do it when they're when they're kids and they have nothing to lose. You know, there's nothing more commendable than that. There's nothing I respect more. You mm. know, it's so fucking hard. And yeah. this this is a perfect kind of segue, I guess, into. The life and times of Mark Borchard, yeah. um, but it's it takes years, and you you fry your relationships with people, you burn bridges, and you burn all your cash, and it's it's because you don't want to be doing anything else. You, you just want to be out there making movies, you know. Yeah. Uh, the Great American Script and the Great American Podcast, the Great yeah. American Movie. Is the line. <laughs> um, let's talk about American Movie. Let's. let's. Uh, what are our first impressions? Uh, Zach, I love that movie. Yeah, it's it's fucking. Really I fucking. Good. It's so good. It's so fucking funny, and then it's also like heartfelt. Very you know what I mean? Heartfelt. Like you, it's very. very heartfelt. Like you just you feel for this guy. You know what I mean? And you want him to succeed, but it's also <laughs> like it's honestly incredible to me that this that these aren't actors. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they're yeah. fucking hilarious. Mike Shank in this movie. is so eccentric. That's a real, real piece, person. by the way. He actually just oh. passed like a month ago. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Do you yeah, remember yeah. I, s- I sent you that did. to the? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I I want to say one thing really quick while it's still on my brain. I, I watched it again last night. I, I've seen it. It, it last night. I think was my fourth time seeing it. There's a scene on Thanksgiving where Mark Borchardt is like clearly drunk and he doesn't have a shirt on. And <laughs> they're filming him oh. and he's eating like the <laughs> leg of a turkey. <laughs> and what he's saying doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> and they like left it in the documentary. He was yeah. like, oh, he's like chewing really loudly. You know what I'm talking about? He's like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he's, like, and then they like question, they're like about what? And he yeah. just like looks at them and <laughs> he keeps eating. <laughs> it just cuts to the next day. <laughs> it's like well, drunk is, off his ass. This is, <laughs> this is one of my like kind of my my only confusion with the film is like it and this is i guess just a choice that you make one of the earliest choices you make as a documentarian is how involved or not to be in the film but i don't know who chris smith is and how he came how he found this Mm -hmm. man who is so like eccentric and so unique in particular (laughs) i I think he was known within the community because he used to uh he used to uh like make movies in like the graveyard and stuff and i think he just kind of got like a a local reputation okay and and chris smith and um this is so messed up that i don't remember the the name of the other documentarian because they they were co-documentarians um I, i think they just were also filmmakers within the community who thought he was such an interesting subject. I mean, because really he is. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah in, Price is the producer. Yeah, yeah. Sarah yeah. Price. Oh, well, it's weird because in the actual credits for the movie, it says it's co directed by Chris Smith and, and oh, her, but on Wikipedia it says it's just Chris Smith. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah, weird. I don't even remember what I was so. saying. Um, you were, I was asking how Chris Smith got involved. Oh, with who knows? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's it's all conjecture, guy. I guess. Yeah. I don't really know. What, what I know is what's in the movie, and the movie covers a lot. I mean, it does. It, we're not. It, we get half an hour in, and then we learn that he has three kids. Four. He has four kids. Yes. <laughs> You're like, wait, what the fuck? He has children? <laughs> yeah. We're Which like half an hour in. Completely incongruous with who this person is. Sure. Um. Yeah. It. I think I mean I was watching it and there were there were it definitely when it opened like it kind of grabbed me immediately yeah um, mm. because I was like even though I knew okay He's this driving is a documentary and the sun's going down and yeah the great American script and the great thought, American movie is this a, is this a is this a mockumentary and like yeah, and yeah, yeah. that's what Mike I said Schenk, bro even before sure. Mike Shank showed up I was like is this like he, is it a, is it one of those early like examples sure. of making a movie about it? But no, these are oh, real people. Yeah. <laughs> which like I guess that speaks to like when it's you such when a you Midwest go out movie. To, when you, you go know? out to the middle of nowhere, yeah. where these you know what I mean, where these people those, I mean, have nothing about each other. We're two decades on, going on three, and this movie could only be a product of where it was filmed and when it was filmed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, Mark Borchardt is is still alive, obviously, mm-hmm. but it's it's not really the same thing i i mean the the trailer park culture is is not even the same as it was in the 90s i mean people have smartphones and and alexas yeah. now and stuff and back then yeah. you, when you lived like in a trailer park it was you and your pot to piss in and your window to throw it out of yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> no. the only thing i can think of that 
remind that this reminded me of a little bit, or that reminds me of this, vice versa, was Nomad Land. Sure, sure. Um, I don't see them. But you know, just in terms of, I mean, that's like people intentionally choosing, mm-hmm. or maybe even not, but circumstances of life they choose a nomadic lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. This is just people who are, you know, sure. middle class to low middle class. Where they're at. And, and it, yeah. it, it really makes sense, like this middle class guy who's who's not inspired by Hollywood movies. There's a part um, where they ask him, "What movies inspired you?" And he says, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And when I went to see this at Metrograph, people laughed. You know, it's like, look at this fucking hick. Look mm. at this working class guy. Like, he's not what he's talking about. W- watch real movies. You know what I mean? But it's like, th- those are valid favorite movies. They, yeah. they teach you everything you need to know. They're not polished. Yeah. They look real. They look like they're out there in the real world. I mean, he, he denotes the gray skies and dead trees mm-hmm. of Dawn of the mm-hmm. Dead. And it's like... What a great thing yeah. to point out. Yeah. When was the last time you watched a Hollywood movie and, and you saw dead trees in one of the sets of the forest they built? You yeah. know? The thing he liked about Texas Chainsaw Massacre was he said it was like a movie they would show you in a class like about like like when you're getting your license and they show you those car wreck movies. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, it looked real. <laughs> yeah. It, lo- it yeah. looked real and, and gritty. And it's like. Yeah, this this working class guy, he probably can't really identify with all the pretty boys in Hollywood movies. He, he's he's into this indie shit because, I mean, low budget films aren't really made for the masses to begin with. They're made for people who are really into movies. That's the audience. He has his camera and his friends, and he's he's decided I'm I'm making my movie. Yeah, you know, I uh, yep. I I mean, and and not to jump the the gun too much, but I I think that. The clips that they do show of Coven at the end. I was like, okay, Coven I'm sounds like oven, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that scene where he's arguing so with funny. The, Which, like, again, he's this like, is... No, no. I, I think, actually, this movie, more than, like, any other thing, is responsible <laughs> for, like, The Office, Parks and Rec. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, Absolutely. Yes. That Absolutely. actor, character, that the actor Christopher guy, Goss movies. the character, but he's a real person who's like, oh, maybe if you put an unalak on top he, of the... He, he reminds me of um, the guy from uh, What We Do in the Shadows, you, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, um, oh Fuck. I haven't watched that. The, that's the YTD that. series, right? Yes, yes. I haven't watched um, it. Oh, that guy's so funny. I know he's not going to Google his yeah, name. Yeah, but just, you know what I mean? Like, that guy is so. Yes. Him and Mike Shank. So good. He's so a character. Specific. And, and how the mom. The, the mom. Oh, yeah. oh Swedish. The mom's mom. great. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. My, like my shout out. Shout out to one of my favorite scenes is when they're shooting the scene where they're trying to put that dude's head through the fucking gap yeah. in it. Oh, I'm sorry. I tried <laughs> to put your like, head through this, man. <laughs> <laughs> what about and he's like, movie? I was looking through the script and I was really hoping that this was one of the shots that <laughs> worked from gotten, last time. <laughs> um, w- what about when he's trying to get Bill <laughs> to say, um, it's, it's all right, right it's, it's okay, <laughs> there's something to live for, Jesus told me so. All right, Bill, give it all you got, take 59, this is for take, the birds. Take I mean, we're, we're done here, I'm, I'm not doing anymore. Like They didn't even get it. <laughs> like, and he's like, out Jesus there all day filming the one line. It's all right, it's okay, okay. sometimes I'm just told, told me so. so. <laughs> oh my God, that was the cut. The cut from take 15 to take 30 is <laughs> back yeah. to back. <laughs> no, it was... It, it's really like the, <laughs> the... It's a masterpiece of editing because sure, there yeah. is, it there's is. so much stuff. Um, what I was going to say is that the, the clips that we see of Coven actually do look kind of yeah. dope. And they do look I've in line with... Sure, it looks good. They do look in line with yeah. Night of the Living Dead. It's and, spooky. And, and, Coven's, and that's Coven's got great that mystery. I love that shot of him running and then, and then it's yeah, yeah. Like super wide of him. Yes. Coming him. And he was right about the scarecrows. He was right. That yeah. shot they were of him great. explaining it to Mike. Mike, it's going to be like, Wah. do you get it? And, and you're like laughing at him because it's still really a movie. You think he's a silly motherfucker. Then you watch the movie and it's like, yo, he was right. Yeah. That's a great yeah. atmospheric shot. Uh, Mike, can you make sure everyone has brown gloves? Hey, does everyone have brown gloves? <laughs> yeah. No, dude. No, dude. No, dude. dude. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> I fucking love Mike Shank. He's so earnest. Yeah. He's like, um, when you play the lottery, sometimes y- you win and sometimes you lose, you know? But if you do drugs and alcohol, you know, you, you, <laughs> all, you always lose. lose. <laughs> How can you not love him? Man? No, he oh, was, he so was great, and I and I loved that his uh, his little guitar riffs were the yeah. score for yeah, the yeah, yeah. oh yeah for the film. They, they, that was perfect. For as, for as eccentric for as everybody is, it, it, like it's a good showcase of like everybody's talent. He gets to score the movie, and yeah. and yeah. you know Mark Borchardt makes something that's atmospheric, yeah. and he actually gets it to play, yeah. and the audience seems to really like it. You know, now did he? Yeah. Uh, the, 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 it sounded like Mike Shank just then. You know, the other funny thing is that. Of course, when the film starts, he's trying to finish uh, 
Northwestern. Northwestern. Western. So Classic. he has to go and finish Coven to get. <laughs> that was another thing I really related thing. to. It's like I have so many projects I started, like shot so much shit from, and like never finished. You know. Yeah. Well, this is yeah. also I, I, it, it. It occurred to me while I was watching American Movie, like why you felt strongly about bringing it on the show, yeah. given like what's going on with you and yeah. your own most recent your thesis that didn't get finished, yeah. and it's like. And then also knowing, like, obviously the story of uh, Bad Taste, I wonder, I guess this is kind of almost a question for you, like, I'm sure it changes day to day, but do, do you feel like you have an amount of hope that, like, it will be finished and that it's going to take I a certain amount of time? I know that my future is in filmmaking. Here's oh, the well, thing. Yeah, yeah. When, when I first started, like, really PAing, I had a conversation with one of these guys, and he was like, uh, well, well, I asked him, will my PA credits be like accumulated anywhere? Are people taking notes of how many days of work as a PA? He's like, why? They want to be in the DGA, the, the Directors mm -hmm. Guild of uh, America. And I was like, how many days as a PA do you have to work to be, cons to be a member, to even apply to be in the DGA? He said 500. Wow. I will be goddamned. <laughs> <laughs> if I work 500 days as a fucking PA getting coffee for motherfuckers and, and having them, you know, leave it somewhere. And then at the end of the day, I, I find the coffee that I got for them that they didn't drink and I'm throwing out and shit. It, it, being a PA makes me want to pull my hair out. It's it's kind of worth it to see how, you know, you're get, getting paid for one thing. But to see how a, a big studio like Hulu and Amazon is doing it. There's a million teams there because they have so much money to burn. But uh, I, man... It, just need to go and and do it like one of one of these guys and and this for as kind of heart wrenching as this movie is it is also very inspiring that's I mean, what i wondered yeah. yeah one of one of the reviews on leatherbox was like <laughs> if you can only laugh at mark borchard that's on you mm. here's yeah. a guy who who's throwing everything you know at it and, he, he, and he's going for it he's, he's sick listing, of not doing it when you he's know? listing his debts like his credit yeah. card debts oh. and all his like. I oh, like, dude, I got a Mastercard. <laughs> Life is yeah. kind of cool sometimes. <laughs> End of all that, he's like, I got a Mastercard. Yeah, yeah it's um. Well, are they I gonna take my Night of the Living Dead book? <laughs> and, and then yeah, convincing his uncle, who I don't know which Bill? his uncle on what side. Yeah, his uncle Bill, but I don't know which side, which you know, parent sibling he is. To like to fund this movie, yeah. and his, his uncle having no earthly idea what he's <laughs> he doesn't making. Doesn't know where he is. He <laughs> doesn't have the wherewithal to even like go there and watch the fucking movie. Yeah. Like, all right, Bill, you ready for movie number two? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Like, fuck, man. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's really. Uh, this is where like just it, it's commendable on the documentarian's part <clears throat> that he's able to kind of thread this emotional line through of sure. like of of okay this person's origins right like kind of how he grew i mean you have his brothers like talking shit about him for yeah, the yeah, yeah. oh my I god he would have been a stalker they, as one uh, of the brothers said yeah and one of them was like i think he'd be best suited just to work in a factory i'm like hey, what the fuck yeah. i'm yeah. so He's protective like, oh, over this he, man when he uh, went off to the military i i thought that would like you know mm -hmm. straighten him out or something to that yeah. Yeah. something to that effect at, at one point, they ask his mom if if she thinks he'll be able to like really make movies, make movies, and she says no. She's like, it's expensive and time consuming, so uh, I don't really think so. Yeah. It's so fucking uh, sad. Yeah. Did he see this at the premiere and see and see that clip For the of first him time? Oh my yeah. god, dude! <laughs> <laughs> like, he was probably sitting next to her when she fucking recorded that. Yeah. Like realistically, <laughs> he was in the room. I also, you gotta love that scene where they're watching the uh, the Thanksgiving Day um, uh, football game. Which, by the yeah. way, hey. Happy Classic. Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy um, Thanksgiving, Pilgrims. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And it's a Thanksgiving movie. Shit. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it is. And he's like cursing up a storm, and his dad like pops yeah, none, his head none of that language. None of that talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just that. repeats. <laughs> he's like, "Fuck those motherfuckers." Hey, motherfuckers <laughs> working in the factory, man. This one's for you, motherfuckers. <laughs> like right after his dad told him not to swear. <laughs> How old do you think he is at that point? Like, like probably thirty, right? Yeah, I assumed he's yeah. like 29, 30, yeah, 31 like for, the, yeah. for the majority of the film. And, Wait, and, shout out to my other favorite scene is when uh, he's like holding up like a whiteboard of like all these like expenses. And he, that he, he made, accidentally like, erases. He's like, his fuck all that. And then he's oh, like, shit, I'm sorry for erasing that. all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to do that. Oh my God. I, it's like, this is like a perfect movie. I, I, mean, I mean, for all like the, the rough, you know, documentary stuff where it's like 
sometimes they'll fade out and, and they'll cut off the subject of the interview and yeah. their words will kind of trail off. And I wanted to hear, you know, the rest, the of, rest that. of that. The rest of that. For all of that, and, and it goes a little bit over long, I guess, but this is like a 10 out agree. of 10 movie to me. It strikes a really it, perfect so balance <laughs> of being heart-wrenching and funny and <laughs> uplifting and inspiring and just being a, a unique way of, of capturing yeah. this mode of doing it. Yeah. When, when you're on a big budget mm -hmm. set, you pay a BTS person to follow mm -hmm. people around with cameras, do little interviews, get photos and stuff. But there's hardly ever, I mean, there's like four or five behind the scenes pictures from like the Blair Witch Project. Yeah. You know, there's like zero for El Mariachi and, and all these like, you know, movies that might, zero budget movies that people tout is like really being important American cinema. And yeah. he, here we are, like, documenting that, and it's something I've never seen before. Yeah. I've never seen anything I mean, in, like this. In, in I've another, seen making of big budget movies, yeah. never anything like this, though. In another mm -hmm. uh, world, we could have easily, you know, reviewed Coven with American mm -hmm. Movie, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Coven, uh, or, yeah. or, or Northwestern, if he ever finished it. Sure. I don't know if he did. He, he actually did do a feature at one point, but it's not called Northwest. It's called something else. Oh, yeah. I, and, and, you know, the other thing that this made me think of is... is the patience that it takes to make a documentary, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. not just to make a narrative You can make film. an American movie about the making of an American movie. <laughs> yeah, it, it, could, could, it could always fold in on itself. I, I watched a movie earlier this summer called... Um, oh, boy, I should have looked at the title before. Uh, <laughs> Symbiotax, Symbio Psycho Taxiplasm, I think it's called. Okay, yeah. It's this old... I remember uh, you telling me about yeah, that. Yeah, it's directed by William Greaves, I think his name is. And it's, uh, it's like... That movie is like um, an experimental documentary where... Um, yeah, William Greaves, 1968, mm -hmm. where he's... 68? 1968. Oh, shit. William Greaves is... Uh, he, he's working with a bunch of actors uh, and a crew, and the, the experiment is <clears throat> to see the effects of, like, the effects of performance on a script. So he has a bunch of different actors act the same script. Yeah. He's filming them for, like, a, for like a, uh, his own process, but then he also has a documentary crew that's filming his filming yeah, of yeah, these yeah. actors. And that's what, Good which Lord. Is what the film is. That's cool. But then at the same time, there's all these layers of understanding as to who's been cued into what, because William Greaves himself right. is kind of playing this character of like a, a hoity toity, you know, documentarian or filmmaker yeah. and being intentionally opaque mm -hmm. to his crew. So you have like the footage of him working with the actors and talking to the crew. And then you have this footage that's cut in of the crew discussing the process amongst themselves sure. and the whole movie is like just kind of talking about filmmaking right this obviously doesn't go that deep because it's not trying to be experimental it's just a, 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 an observation of yeah, these people sure. but it just anytime I, I watch a documentary that's about a movie i'm always thinking about that because mm -hmm. like when you're documenting someone it's not a simple six month eight month no. timeline you really have to stick with them for as long as you even, think even you if they get the fucking story. tired of you and they yeah. don't want to be around you anymore <laughs> yeah and it's, it's that and that was the other thing. I guess I was waiting at some point in the movie for like Mark to kind of explain or indicate his relationship with Chris, but it's just sure. yeah. it's just always kind of like okay, and now you're here, which I, which I contributes thing, to that mockumentary style that we've yeah, that's the popular yeah, now yeah. because there you don't acknowledge the camera. The whole per thing se. is that the the documentarian never interferes, and right. and it's actually a rule that I don't like. Um, I, I had a class. Yeah, I'm not going to say her name, but the professor, she was this documentarian, and she showed us the most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. It was a documentary that she had made. It was about this guy whose fetish was, um, guys, I'm so sorry. Hey. His fetish was was cut, making little, cutting off little bits of his skin, and he couldn't come unless he would cut off little parts of his body. So at some point, he had cut off toes and a finger and things like that. Oh, good. And I oh, remember saying, geez. why, did, and she's like, documenting it. I'm like, why did you never, you know, interfere? Like, like, why did you not stop this guy from doing this? Yeah. And she, she does the whole the documentary and never interferes. I'm like, are you yeah, sure? But you're, but you're showing this to other people. Like, it's 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 kind of the same uh, issue that a lot of people have with like anthropology as a as a field of study, where or, or, or and not forensic anthropology, like for studying like bones and stuff, but the idea of going to cultures and and hanging out with them or spending time with them, trying mm -hmm. to learn more about them. It's like. Right. You're, you know, you're invading this space where you're a foreigner. Sure. For the for ostensibly or as you say, the purpose of like educating, I guess, everybody else. Yeah, but yeah. So you're trying not to get involved. But then it's like, why do you why is it that the culture is only valid once you've been there mm -hmm. to expose it? Similarly, right. it's like if you're here, film is it's very difficult to make film 
it's it's meant to be a communal medium, right? Like you don't yeah. most people don't make a movie to show to no one, right? It's it you could make you well, could George some. Lucas apparently he does that. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's what he said. Well, maybe more of us should do it, right? Yeah. I mean, because it's so tied into profit and everything, which makes the whole thing so yeah. complex. <laughs> You could, you know, painters will paint something and never show it to anyone. They just keep it for themselves. Someone might make music and never play it for anybody. But with film, oftentimes it's you create it for the purpose of sharing it. So sharing if you're it, filming yeah. someone killing themselves, yeah, it's like morally, <laughs> you, you can go to jail. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's some, there's definitely some ethical. Makes you questions. like an accomplice, right? I mean, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I guess like. If they're only doing harm to themselves, you know, maybe not. But well, isn't that? I mean, this if they're is harming way other people. Then you're an accessory potentially. Yeah, this is way off topic. Isn't there like a statute, um, some kind of uh, law where it's like if if you can interfere and like stop a thing from happening, and and you it would be easy for you, and why wouldn't you not? Well, you know, yeah. then then you are an accomplice of like the thing happening. There are some people who are like mandated <clears throat> reporters of of. If they see like sure, child sure. a child being abused, yeah, like, that that's occupational. So if you're like sure, a parole okay, officer, yeah. if you're a guidance counselor or right. a social worker, you have to step in. But I don't think it's because if that were the case, every bystander filming subway. Maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Well, <laughs> He's in jail. A, 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 a thing I've you know this on all of those videos is like the top comments are always like, "Why is the person filming not doing, doing shit, something?" You yeah. know, like, and you know, this is this isn't usually the type of thing we talk about here on this show. But I uh, I'm reminded that you know a couple. Like not even a full month ago, um, the rapper Takeoff was shot yeah. from of, uh, from the Migos, and oh. a lot of people were talking about how it's at the point where if you willfully upload death yeah, footage, yeah, yeah. you should be like yeah, prosecuted. Yeah. And I feel like that's valid. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If, if you know, but before they like cleaned up Reddit, that was where people would go to see beheadings and shit. There, yeah. there, there was like gore on Reddit, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's but the, the the internet was like the wild fucking west, yeah. man. Like un, until shit started to get cracked down. I mean, you know, big organizations buy social media like Reddit, and yeah. eventually they're like, we gotta scrub this clean, you know. Um, I mean, there are YouTube videos that are, that have seventeen years posted seventeen years ago. Yeah, because two thousand five is when yeah. YouTube was founded. It's it's crazy how long... The second YouTube video I ever posted was porn because they didn't have, um, you know, uh, nice. terms and, and yeah. services yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so the, fir- the first YouTube video is a guy at a zoo and he's like, these are the elephants and they have long trunks. And and people are always like, what's the second YouTube video I ever posted? And it was lesbian porn. <laughs> <laughs> but when YouTube went big, they took it down. You know? Yeah. Oh, man. I, well, obviously, this, this movie isn't about the internet. It's very no, pre-internet. No, um, but I very analog movie. Yeah. Both of these are these yeah. are so super good. analog movies. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I, I I do think that this was uh, <laughs> this is it's a fun episode. I mean, it's a shame that Wes couldn't join us today because I yeah I think it was a loved American movie. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, as another he's unprofessional. Uh, Let's not talk about him anymore. Yeah, Welcome. God, God. Uh, as <laughs> as another uh, up and coming filmmaker. Um, it would have been interesting to hear his take. We'll we'll, we'll force him to watch it. Uh, at some yeah, point. we will. It's a great I think, movie. I feel like ba- I was. You really have taste. to watch this movie. I was watching Bad Taste. I was like, this could have been a commentary track too. Whenever we yeah, get easy, around to that. Easy, <laughs> easy, yeah. 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 Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess we wouldn't necessarily rate these in, in this. Particular I think they're episode. both immortal. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. You know, yeah. they're they're both important movies. Mm. They're both entertaining in their own way. But I mean, how can you not be inspired by bad taste if 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 you have any semblance of mm-hmm. what it takes to make a movie? Yeah, I mean, yeah. American movie, obviously. Mm. But bad taste, yeah. it's like every second of that is like, oh my god! Like, look, look at, at him how, go! Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, look at him go! Look at how he did this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, Zach. Did you have a Did you have a particular rating um, or final thoughts? Yeah, that? I could. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd probably give. I, I I enjoyed both. I think Bad Taste grew on me as I watched it. I think mm-hmm. similar to you, Justin. Like I think in the beginning, I was kind of like, "All right, what's going on?" Like I filmed <laughs> myself just being like, but then eventually, by the end, I was like, "That was fun as fuck." Yeah. Um. So I I'd give that um. What the fuck is it? Reanimate and then right. American Movie. I actually fucking like love that. Like I, <laughs> I it's it was so funny, but at the same time, it, yeah, it was heart wrenching but inspiring in yes. a in a somber way you know a what I mean? really like, hard like, balance to strike yeah there are very yeah. few you know, movies you, that strike that balance exactly yeah and you just see like you know it's just like these people and uh, i mean it, when you're out there in the midwest especially in the 90s it's like there's not a lot that i imagine that you can like that you have you know compared sure. to people that were like you know privileged enough to grow up in the city which is you know it's a blessing right. and a curse but you know it's just like there's so like you know what when you're a dreamer out there like yeah. in wherever they are like i'm like i have to imagine like 
how much harder that is, you know, and to see mm, him yeah. persevere through this shit, it's fucking funny, but it's also like, it's like, God damn, it's like, it's beautiful. You know what I mean? Like I, I've lived it's, in s- yeah. small towns and, and I've met a lot of like Mark Borchardt like guys, you mm-hmm. know, and they talk yeah. about the movies that they loved when they were kids and what they would do if they could make a movie. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've known, I mean, Mark, Mark Borchardt is really <laughs> indicative of like, Oh, it's gonna make me sad, but he he he's indicative of of this culture that I guess never really had the means to do it, but but is so wistful and and so longing to be able to like make those dreams come true. And a lot of those guys burn out. Yeah, um, it, it's it's hard to be realistic when when you haven't seen how the industry kind of runs. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. always thinking one day I'm gonna get my shot, but it's like a lot of it is political. A, mm. a lot of your favorite people who you may not even realize were born into it. Mm. Um, yeah. And it sucks, man. But like, they're not all built like Mark Borchardt, you know? Yeah. I mean, th- th- there's a lot of big budget filmmakers out there who could not do this. He's incredibly yeah. endurant yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. or durable. And I think that's one of the things that they, that they note. <clears throat> The actor uh, who he gives a concussion with that cabinet door <laughs> says, uh, like he says of him, like you know, I, the guy is persistent, yeah. like he he doesn't quit. And I, yeah. and I, and I, you know what you just said, Zach. I I often think, or it just made me think that there are sort of like um, there's like pockets, right, of um, of aspiration where like when you when you're mm-hmm. outside of America, when you come from outside of America, a lot of people, as we know across the world, are just trying to get into where yeah, we are, yeah. right. And then yeah. when you're inside America, not everywhere has the same level of mm-hmm. access or economic stability or whatever. So you're living in the Midwest in the 90s and you're like, well, I don't have the money to yeah. move to L.A. This actually kind of fucking sucks. Yeah. Or, or yeah. to go to New York or to do Broadway. You know, yeah. it, was, it was a lot more like um, sort of uh, there was a, a starker contrast yes. between the yeah. East and West Coast back then. Right. Point just being that it does, I think, fuel that motivation to see Mark. You know, beat the haters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. to make something of himself. Do his fucking movie, man. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I'll be goddamned if I don't get my American dream. Yeah. I, it, it also made me think, Zach, who's that guy? Um, he has that series on Netflix where he's like, he pretends to be a document. He like he does like uh, social experiments. Nathan Fielder. Nathan Fielder, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have yeah, you watched Nathan for You? I stuff? haven't, oh but my I know God. that you two you like him. You would love it. <laughs> you would love Nathan yeah. for You. And this made me, it makes sense to me, rather, that, that uh, you specifically, Zach, would like this movie so much, given how you sent me a clip from that, uh, at least one episode of that uh, series. Oh, this is a, you're talking about a different thing than what, I was, than what I sent you. What are you talking about? I was, it was uh, fucking, I don't know, it was like how to with John Wilson. That's oh, what I was okay, yeah. But it's a similar thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But it's yes, a similar yes, yes. thing. It's a very similar thing. How to? Yeah. yeah yes. Any. Any. I think Nathan Fielder is in that same kind of realm. Though. Yeah. Anything where where you're yeah, yeah. You're, you're just bringing a camera and you're letting the the Let natural the human yeah, yeah raw dog in reality uh, wonder yeah. <laughs> show yeah. itself. Uh, raw dog in reality is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess okay. Then if I were to rate it, I mean bad taste. Um, yeah, I think it's safe to reanimate. I think I'll land with you there, Zach. And I think um, uh, mm. American movie. The more I think about it, the more. Um, I, I think the. I think if you show it to somebody in ten years from now who's kind of in the same boat, they would still say, "Yeah, this is relevant." Yeah, and and I and I think it. What you're talking about, what we've talked about, that balance that it strikes really comes together. Mm-hmm. Obviously, right at the end when it says, "You know, Uncle Bill passed away." Uh, yeah. uh You know, um, mm. I guess it was only like a, maybe a couple of weeks after the movie premiered, and that he left. Uh, even after all the nonsense, even after 000, like yeah. be, all the confusion, 50K he left to 50, Western, yeah. toward the next 50. movie, which is like, I was like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that, that really, I think, <sighs> even, that, that hit me, man. American movie is fucking great. Yeah. Never seen Clerks. Yeah. Uh, Jay, you don't I have to. Another, <laughs> it's like, all right. 90s indie. Uh, but this one is definitely up there, I think. In yeah. The so, yeah, give it Why the heck not? Hell yeah. Um, I right, guess boys. I do. have a nephew to visit and a cookout to go to hey! with my whole extended oh, family. Hey! So. Um, yeah, folks, I'm not sure when this will be out. Maybe after Thanksgiving. No rush. No, uh, happy Thanksgiving, Pilgrim. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes. And normally we would say watch more movies, but in this case, make your own damn movie.